Hello, all you crazy bronies and peggy sisters. This is Silver Quill, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, welcoming you to another MBS show. Joining me today are podcaster and planeswalker extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Glory, glory, grief and stone. Glory, glory. I can't make that song any justice. None of us can. It is the lofty ideal. And also joining us is Pokemon trainer and anime mascot, Sapphire Heartsong. Boy, kawaii desu, griffin, kawaii desu, anime weeaboo. The sad thing is I understood half of that. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us as well on this on this day of the griffin is Von Griffin, the manga common. This town of mine is burning red. It tells me to do this podcast. But there's a cream for that. <laughs> Uh, is it Deadpool on Blu-ray and DVD? That's a whole different kind of cream, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, uh, oh my. I still want to watch the DVD now. <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> but yes, folks, today we are going to pull out the Spanghammer 3000 and p- gather a bunch of feathers. It's time to talk about Friends Forever, number 24, starring Rarity and Gilda, a truly unexpected matchup. In this issue, we have learned that Gilda has an issue with sports. Namely, she needs Rarity to come and design custom uniforms for the Griffinstone team. They're up against the Yaks in a competition, and they need to show their civic pride. So what craziness awaits this unlikely duo in the land of the Griffins? We will find out shortly. But first, we will give our initial impressions on this issue written by Georgia Bell, art by Jay Foskett, and colors by Heather Breckel. So, as temporary host, I shall ask... Previous host, Norman Sanzo, what were your thoughts on this issue? Well, let me see. I'm going to go for my really, really first impressions, which was when I first read this comic. I was excited because Gilda is one of my favorite Tier 2 characters, and getting to read about her in the comic, where this was after Griffinstone. This was nice Gilda. This was polite, and I don't want to be a jerk Gilda. So I was really excited to see what they do here. And having her interact with Rarity out of all ponies here is... Wow. This is going places. And I really enjoy this comic. Um, having them interact with each other, getting Rarity into sports out of all things was unexpected. But it's a nice surprise. So yeah, I, I like this comic. Sapphire, your thoughts. Go. <clears throat> well, I definitely like the um unexpected change with Gilda and Rarity. That was my only favorite part of the comic. I didn't like this comic as much as I wanted to. <clears throat> and I'm very disappointed in the art department. Mostly because I read up on like some things about this comic after reading it. Because there were, like, certain parts that had confused me, like, art-wise. Especially with, um, who is it, Greta? Oh, yes. I remember seeing, like, that in the comic. It's like, wait, wasn't that the, um, One Pony and Lost Treasure of Griffinstone? So I did some research, and apparently I had found out that Jay Foskett isn't really a fan of the show. So it makes me wonder... And it sort of, like, brings up a question. Does he even care about this job? Is he doing it just for a paycheck? Because considering the last comic we saw with him um, in the Pinky and Celestia comic, with all the, uh, you know, the rushed artwork and whatnot, I then came to the conclusion he doesn't really care, so why should I care about this comic? It is a question we face with many a creative endeavor. So we can, we can go into that a little more in depth. But now on this tale of Griffins, I think we should ask young Griffin. Manga. Your thoughts. Go. Betrayal! Ah, uh, we're gonna have a fun time. Betrayal! <laughs> Alright, Spoonie. References <laughs> aside, choking and bad references aside, I enjoy the concept of the idea. However, however, like what Sappy said, There are things in this comic that I personally don't care for, and I know it's cheap, and it's more of an aesthetic thing going on, but considering that the artist right here and 
correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the guy who took an item like a wisp from Google and slapped it on a pony for a cutie mark? Yeah, he yeah, was... that's exactly what I was talking about with the uh, Pinkie Pie and uh. Oh, yeah, he basically just whisked that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. That's the silver I love, the punny one. <laughs> you don't like it when I punish you? <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh. I just don't oh, like it when you try to speak ghetto. In the ghetto. <laughs> you whisk her off her feet with the puns. All right, I'm, I'm sorry, Maga. I'm, I'm just, I'm distracting no, also, no, it's I, fine. I, I, it's fine. I, I, Anything to get my mind off the comic. <laughs> oh, oh my, we have, we have been. Ins- no, feed me your rage. <laughs> anyway, I do. I, I like the concept right here, but what fails is the art. What fails is basically characterization on a few points right here, and it kind of baffles me because, well, yes, uh, Rarity did see Gilda at one point. It was only like for what. Five minutes on screen, and I don't even know if Gil even knows who the rest of Dash's friends' names are. Aside from Pinky, so... Uh? <laughs> Pinky's friend and Rainbow Dash's friend are the element bearers, so they're really popular. Yeah, but we're talking Griffinstone here. We're talking Griffins, who probably would... Why would the Pony newspaper go out there or anything, or news go out there? I think they would be popular, but that's besides the point. Well, who who can say? I mean, presumably Gilda would keep in touch. One would hope she'd keep in touch. I want Gilda to keep in touch. Yes. I do, too. I like Gilda's character. And, hell, I got a plushie sitting on my shelf over here of her, so <laughs> I, mean, I, do, I do like her. But at the same time, it just feels like a little... <laughs> oh, you want... I just came up with the next Hallmark special. <laughs> Touched by a Gilda. <laughs> oh, God. No, that you were like, oh. Yeah, Silver, I'll be looking forward to that during Christmas when I sit in my grandma's house doing that, <laughs> watching the Hallmark friggin' specials. Oh, my God, really? You do that? My grandma makes me watch Hallmark specials during Christmas time, yes. Is it a form of torture for her? For me, yeah. Oh, wow. Like She enjoys them, but I hate them. <laughs> I think she could be enjoying the look on your face. There, There is that. There is always the look of discomfort on family as you watch something awful. Goodness knows I, I bombarded my parents with such things in my childhood. Say, what are you watching? This is awful. This ninja scroll thing. Oh, it's all about the ninjas. <laughs> There's not that That's much what I spell about Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, For me, it was Yu Yu Hakusho. <laughs> uh, for me, it was Slam Dunk. Of me, course, I like... preferred my Pokemon. The Pokemons. But yes. either way, our past trauma aside, but Maga, do you, have you at least given your initial rage? Yes. Yes. Your, init- your initial rage has cooled. But yes, we, and for myself, I, this one I came out of an experience of, well, that happened. Mostly because it touches on something that has been a growing discomfort with the comics. Comic exclusive characters and how much focus or sympathy should they receive? A lot of this comic is not really about Rarity and Gilda. It's about Rarity helping yet another Griffin, who we will get to in good order. But it suffers from a lack of focus, and as Sapphire noted, there's a great visual disparagement disparagement between uh, the show and the comic, which can affect the reader. I mean, the more unique a setting looks, the more it stands out in our memories. If it becomes generically genericville, we're in trouble. But at the same time, it's not like the worst comic. No, nothing so far has managed to surpass Friends Forever number one in terms of sheer... Uh, the Cowboy the arc and the Deer arc? That was the main series. Uh, this is uh, Friends Forever as a series. Numero uno was the low point for Friends Forever. It was not the low point of the comic series. All right. So if we are all in the readiness of the preparedness... Yep, I'm all green. Excellent. I got mine pulled up. Who's Manga? on standby? I don't know. What's on first? Who's on first? I'm not asking you. As I'm saying, who's on first? I don't know. Oh, no, I don't know. It's on the second base. Uh, Who is base. on first? Oh, okay. We, we can... Okay. <laughs> who is if on first? Look... I prefer the who's on stage gag, to be more honest. 
basically. I just you, mentioned who was on stage. If y'all listen closely, you can hear Abbott and Costello rolling in their graves. <laughs> uh, well. They're rolling so fast they can charge up New York City at this rate. Uh. Alrighty, so let us begin. We start off in Kent in Rarity's boutique, which looks a little bit different than uh, than normal, but not to an excessive degree. And pretty much right off the right off the start, you can see why Jay Foskett's uh, art style is so hotly debated amongst the fans. The ponies have much larger heads, smaller bodies, and tend to favor human style poses. It reminds me of like the chibi anime style at times, and uh, on one hand, I kind of like it, but on the other hand, when it comes to like poses and like um, like if we go into the next page, we see. Uh, I don't know who this character's name is, uh, jumping up. Uh, Lilac see, Links. Lilac Links, okay. We, uh, we see her jumping up with a sweater in her hoop, and you can see her legs, and I'm like thinking, um, I'm sure those don't bend that way. Yeah, but for me, I do enjoy J. Foskitt's art style. To me, they're, it's cute. To me, it's very adorable. And I highly enjoy his art style. But when it comes to poses like Lilac's doing here, it's questionable at best. I, I'm not completely blind to it, but I do see good points. I do see the good and the bad with his art work here. I've always been in the camp of you need to get used to his artwork to enjoy it. Once you get past that, you'll enjoy the story. That's the thing about comics, and this is something that I like to. If there's a good enough story behind it, you can forgive jarring or bad artwork and i will be really fair here his take on gilda is actually pretty good i do like the design for her on this right here yep agree with that one too but we're getting just a little ahead of ourselves because first off we have to establish that lilac links is an avid boofy ball fan what is boofy ball you ask i'm asking that myself who in the world came up with this horrible evil sport <laughs> I mean, especially since we do have football helmets in here, so there might be football, and there is wrestling, too. Yeah, but you know what would work? You know, seriously, what would work in this universe? Quittage. Oh, God. Chase the snitch. <laughs> it's the golden snitch. <laughs> Harry Potter has caught it. <laughs> yeah, well, that'd be kind of unfair if you had magic powers. So you'd just be like, oh, there it is. Got it. Yeah, but it'll only be, like, I don't know, I mean, you could make it work if you really put some time and effort into it, but nah, nah. I mean, you can probably do it just between blighted creatures, like Pegasus and Griffins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. And dragons, wow, that would be a match. That yeah, would just be gotta a short... in that armor. That would be a short match. It would appear the other team has been consumed, <laughs> which we hear, according to the rules, is a forfeiture. <laughs> And now the audience is on fire. <laughs> We'd like you all to be aware that you signed waivers before entering the stadium, so sorry about the lawsuits. Not going to happen. <laughs> oh, God, the power for those magic gates, too, you know? <laughs> so of course, you do a dang thing. Why am I laughing so hard about this? Oh, God. <laughs> I have no oh, idea, no, Norman, because I'm not faced at all. <laughs> The thought of people burning to death makes Norman giddy. We are in, we are seeing a whole other side of this fellow. And there's me who just doesn't care. And there's me who gets some marshmallows. Oh, hi, Rarity. Wait, I'm a marshmallow too, and I have cotton candy hair now. Oh, God. And then there's the griffin with the muddle up cocktails. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Nine. And Rarity has her own offensive weapon, the Spang Hammer 3000 Spangling Gun, which she has to wear a uh, eye protection, welder's a welder's helmet indeed. Although, of all the artwork, this one might be the strangest, because if you look at Rarity's mouth, I believe that lower line is supposed to be a chin mark, but it looks like she's got two mouths. I know, it's, it reminds me of that, it reminds me of Sanitarium, a game where you actually where you actually go to a village and there's this kid who has two mouths. Freaky. Hey, I play some really weird games. Doesn't would... it remind you of, like, the uh, hair of, or the uh, grass mark in the eye back in, um, you know, the one issue? 
It was the first issue that I appeared on yeah. the MBS show. I forget which one. It was uh, it, 18? Nah, I think it was the one that Jeepos get did too. Yeah. It was, I think, you know what? It was the Celestia Pinkie Pie one. No, no, no. It was the one before that with Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. Uh, yeah, I think that. Yeah, but still, um. The one where I appeared in the comic cover for some reason. Oh yeah, the anniversary thingy. Remember the peer pressure thingy? Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, remember the hair, the wrestling Rainbow Dash's eye? It's like that. Yeah, but that's different. This is a choice that either A, G Fosgate forgot, or B, he wanted to do a chin, so, yeah. I think that could have been rectified if there was, like, a little bit of shading under there, you know, make it look like it was under her neck, I mean, her neck and stuff like that. That could have easily been done. Mm -hmm. Let's not dwell on this, because the more we dwell, the more we see the flaws. Isn't that kind of what we're supposed to do in a review? Kind of, yes, but... In any case, a knock at the door, and it's Gilda. Ah, yeah. Gilda the Griffin. Boku no waifu. Wow. Man, I'm learning all sorts of things about you today, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, carry on. I'm not sure I can anymore. I've I've stared into the abyss. <laughs> ah, you've seen the, you you've seen everything. Once, sometimes when you stare into the abyss, the abyss, the abyss tells you about its wife. <laughs> <laughs> so the abyss. Wow. Ah, <laughs> right. so basically, Gilda's in town because she needs to create uniforms for the Griffin Storm Boofy Ball team. And while Rarity has no uh, interest in, you know, the unfashionable Griffin Kingdom, the idea that she could make official merchandise to make her mark on the fashion world of an, quite frankly, uncouth, very uncouth country is just too much. And look at her, her daydream. I don't know why, but this is the only time I like a Jay Foss gets, like, human pose, like, with Rarity. That's the only time I like it and appreciate it. <laughs> Because so. just be told she looks sort of fabulous yet awkward. I love it. I'm gonna say they actually get like a little bit more technology in this too. I mean, we got we got more. I mean, I know we had cameras, but and I know there was like film before because we had like a black and white in the cartoon, black and white film. But I was always wondering if there were actually movies in there as well. We got a camera right there. I mean, we got one of those, um, you know, one of those old timey recording cameras or one of those film cameras. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. equestrian technology has been confusing because we got arcade machines and we got helicopters yeah and also trains <laughs> the trains were confusing because they were pulled by horses and then now we got pulled by coal oh yeah so there's that so basically equestria is known for schizophrenic technology levels indeed yeah just like naruto stick <laughs> technology <laughs> levels uh don't even get me into that. Like, I could just talk about that one all day. Um, but anyway, let's get back into it. Yes. Let's get drawn in like Rarity's starstruck face, which appears to be trying to implode her face. And a sunburst, too. We're all gonna die from Rarity's happiness. You know, for a minute there, I thought that was Gilda holding up a, a claw, but then I realized that's Rarity's back leg. It's like, wow. Do you do Once again, that's not how a leg should bend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not a pony's leg, by the way. <laughs> Maybe she practices yoga? Is that Pilates? I don't know. Uh, well, I'm a little confused. Why is she on a stool now? Because <laughs> she stool, because she stool the show. <laughs> uh, Silver, I love you so much right now. Oh my. It almost makes up for the ebonics. Mate. Right. After some light packing, emphasis on light for rarity, we get her in Griffinstone, where they have two Sherpa-esque ponies who Again, you can see the human style poses. We also see that Rarity hates spines. Whatever reason, she has chosen to eliminate the, the vertebrae of Equestria with her luggage. Although I will give her props that that is a wonderful outfit that complements her in Griffin Stone. People have always been mentioning that, oh, Jay Fosgate's art is terrible. He drew ponies in the human form, like, I don't like it, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And I never really been into how I put this. I never really complain about it that much. But looking at the Sherpas here, like, why are they carrying it like that? Why, why do that? It's supposed to be more of a comedic effect, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, I do see it. It's really funny, but why? 
I, I'm not really a fan of it too, but I really can't really complain because I have drawn like Griffin in a few of my animations with like a similar human-esque uh, abilities. I mean, he can walk on his hind legs, so I can't really complain on that part. It's okay. I mean, but still, like, my thing is like, it doesn't make sense. Like, if you, uh, I'm overthinking this one. Well, it's a legitimate question. It take if it makes them look human, it makes them stop feeling like ponies, and that can take you out of the story. That is one of the things the art in a comic or the animation in a uh, in a show can do. Just take you out of it right then and now, there. We, yeah, but at the same time, we had instances in the show where the ponies did exhibit more human-like poses. I mean, do I have to bring up Rainbow Dash kneeling after Daring Do? Mm-hmm. I, I'm still wondering how she accomplished that. You don't have knees! <laughs> While it is can be jarring at the same time, it does give it its own unique flavor, but it really all depends on your preference if it's something that you like or if it's something you don't like. I've said this before and I say it again. I like Jay Fosgis' art. I'm not complaining. I'm just pondering why did he do this choice. And Manga, you hit the nail on the head. It's funny. <laughs> and yeah, it is funny. Two ponies carrying luggage over their heads like that. It is funny. Let us continue onward for the artwork is in service to the story, and the story is that, well, Griffin Stone has a new obsession. They like this boofy ball, and they've got a chance at winning the tournament cup. But they first, they have to get to their stadium, which I'm sorry is not look like the bird's nest from China <laughs> for the Olympics, but that's probably a good thing. China mm-hmm. did not know what to do with that place after the Olympics. Of course, we need to go back into the art discussion, because there are two things on uh, the panel where they're entering Griff- on the page where they're entering Griffin Stone that stand out. Mm-hmm. The first is that we see the rundown status, but the bird nest motif of Griffin Stone is not present in this comic. These are huts, regular town huts. Mm. And as Griffin Stone was sort of unique for its rundown bird's nest look, that, again, the artwork can take you out of it for a moment. You're like, this isn't right, Griffin Stone. Much the same way, Greta's put on a few pounds and changed her color and gotten a... <laughs> well, no. <laughs> gotten maybe a, a beak job. <laughs> it, did, it didn't work out. You shouldn't have gone to Mexico for that. <laughs> uh, well, well I, I, think, I think we're breaking manga. Yes. <laughs> I'm proud of that. There's one more thing, too. I mean, if you look at the Griffins and that panel, look at their coloring. I mean, they, one thing about the Griffins that stood out is that they had, like, a different colored feathered head and a different colored body, but they share the same coloring. In contrast, you've got yellow right there, and you got these three. Yeah. The the Griffin motif, even you, Manga, has always been... Um, we have this bird-like shape on our head, and we also have plume uh, around our chest, and we have feline um, lower bodies. So that's always been the griffin motif. And having that as the key point of a griffin is pretty cool. But scaling them down to something as, yeah, brown, everything, talons and paws, it's just, nah... I mean, you can have, like, similar shades. I mean, how I do with that other Griffin who has, like, gray and a darkish blue coloring for him or his uh, or his fur and feathers design right there. But it's that, at the same time, you've got birds right here. And if you look at pretty much every other Griffin aside from Gilda, they are all one single color, save for their beaks and their talons. And... Kind of takes away the charm that they had with the Griffins, and it seems kind of lazy too. And also another thing I noticed is with this tree here, that their feathers for their heads are just like hair. Yeah, like their their hair. Like it's not like Gilda's feather. Like even Silver here has his own unique style when it comes to his mane. Oh, you mean a comb over? What, what do you mean, <laughs> even silver? Like, I'm, uh, this is a good thing, my friend. This is a good thing. Even. Apparently, your uh, feathers are a comb over, old man. Are you thinking Donald Trump? Hey, now, let's not get insulting here. No, no, yeah, no. Well, I'm not going to say it like that. It's more like Homer Simpson. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't go there. I didn't go there. Oh, the shots are being fired now. <laughs> 
Can we get the air horns now? Speaking of shots, we finally get to see a shot on goal with a boofy. But it's called a boofy pop. This is a sport that involves kicking a small creature. Do I really need to express terror at this concept? This one in on the team has the mouth of a sailor and is apparently very competitive. But I kind of question if there are other willing boofy puffs. Because <laughs> basically you're watching a sport where you kick a small animal through goals. Fluttershy would have a conniption. What? I'm still like, what? Fun comic, but th- why this? Why, also, why, you... why does it have four arms? So it can get a leg up on the competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I could see that. So, it, but we are introduced now to Coach Klaus. Mm-hmm. Not only one of the best boofy ball players, now Coach, he also helped outline the rules for the Griffinstone League. And he is harsh on the team, but especially so with a scrawny male griffin named Fire Gem. Fire Gem? Gem. Fire Gem. Fire Gem. All right. Why that? Oh, Gem? He's I such don't a know. funny name. That seems kind of weird. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a cool name and all, but when you say Fire Gem, I think of maybe a pony or even a dragon, not a griffin. Yeah, I mean, griffins have the tendency to have German-sounding names. Really, I didn't know manga Kong was German. I told you. Usually. You gotta say it with an accent. Is a manga common? <laughs> and angry. Or the manga Amon. Uh, but carry on. Carry on my way with son. So basically, we get to watch the Griffinstone team in action. Where basically, Fire Gem is getting clobbered left and right. And here's the thing. This is where, for me, the comic starts to lose the focus. Because suddenly it's not so much about Gilda as it is about Fire Gem's abuse. And this comic is actually very well timed for us to talk about, as at the time of this recording, uh, Newbie Dash just aired. It does raise the question of when does heckling, hazing, or being tough go too far? While the Wonderbolt's treatment of Rainbow is debatable, it's very clear here this guy is just flat up being abused. We see in one panel that he gets smacked up right the head with one of the boofy thing. The boofy puff. Yeah, the boofy puff is being just directly thrown by his head by that one griffin with the bad haircut. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand the whole hazing, rag- ragging and whatnot and stuff. It's kind of a form of brotherly love, bonding or something like that. I don't know. It's that kind of feeling. But with this one, with Fire Gem, it looks like that he's just being bullied. And Coach is just releasing all his frustrations on the poor guy. I know, so, I just want to hug his little scrawny, buck-teeth, feathered butt. <laughs> no, aw, poor thing. I'm not going near that Adam's apple. <laughs> yeah, me either, but still, aw, poor thing. I want to hug him. But, so here's the here's the question then. Do you care about Gilda at this point? I do like Gilda here. She's trying to balance things out because being a team member and also being the coach's favorite She's kind of in the middle of the situation here. And we'll see near the end the decision she has to pick. I can't honestly say I cared about Griff Gilda at this point. I mean, yeah, she's the focus and she looks cool and all that, but she's just kind of there for me. Just there. I mean, I care more about uh, Rarity and Fire Gem right now. And that's... Well, yeah, well, there is a plot going on with Gilda. I mean, I think we're jumping ahead a little bit, so you'll have to forgive me. But um, we learn that she's being offered the coach assistant position, and she was actually going to be talking about a, a fire gem with the coach when he got her the position, stuff like that. And while it is a decent plot line, it's more acting like a side plot that's complementing the whole thing. And when I look at the cover... I was thinking, oh, Gilda and Rarity, cool. Who is this fire jam and why should I care? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, this has been always been a hot topic that we've been talking about on this review show, which which is, uh, okay, we expect uh, couple A and B to star in said comic, but we get couple A being the main focus instead of B. For example, it's the Spike Luna comic. We got more of Spike, less of Luna, like really, really less. 
and rarity in the cakes. It was more rarity than the cakes. Yeah. I want to see more of the cakes. Yeah, and also Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. It's more Fluttershy than Rainbow Dash. Oh, wow. Oh, honestly, I would have loved seeing a comic with Gilda and Fluttershy. Oh, oh my. Make up for that I mean, like, fest. I mean, think about it. I mean, she went to the same flight camp as both Gilda and Dash, so why not? True that. We still have to get to the main tournament. Mm-hmm. And so Gilda, yes, she has made uh, assistant coach to the team. Now, Gilda views herself as just baking scones and doesn't feel like she can really can t- talk up, talk down to Coach Klaus. She doesn't even seem to feel like she deserves to be in the same room as him. So with this new position of power, she starts mimicking his style and just starts dumping on Fire Gem as well, calling oh, him a, la- a lamer brainer, which I could think of worse insults. Yeah, but it's a children's comic, so, oh, that's bad. She's so 90s. <laughs> uh, look at the power glove. It's so bad. And then lo and behold, because, let's see here, Gertie... We've got Gilda, Greta, and Gertie. Has I, got... refuse to, I, saw, I refuse to acknowledge her as Greta. We'll just call her Big G. Big G. <laughs> uh, that works. So Big G comes on in saying that Gertie's got the muskox pox from G- Greta, Gertie, and Gilda. I just like the alliteration. <laughs> now, now, here's the thing. The whole reason Fire Gem's on this team is just to balance the numbers. He's the last one to arrive, the last one to train and basically just a placeholder so without them well without gertie apparently they're down a team so rarity joins the crew and apparently she can because wings are not a requirement in this boofy ball in fact griffins are forbidden from flying so a pony not that much different but i'm assuming uh rarity can't use magic obviously oh yeah well we don't see a rule book, and the only thing that we see about rules about who can play is they need to have four legs in a uniform. Well, I'm on the page here. Um, she's a pony. Shouldn't that disqualify her? She got four legs and a uniform. That's all I. <laughs> that's all I care about. Uh, so basically, uh, for who's you don't fly, you don't use magic. You're clean. Let's go. There you go. But we start the great match with the Yaks, and wow, this shot of the referee between the two teams. I'm having some trouble with some of the perspectives. I mean, from it there, I, I couldn't trace the uh, the referee's face. It's like, which part's the beak? Is it a Yak? Oh, there are wings. Okay, there's the beard. There's that unique beard that goes, that is both a hairline and a beard. <laughs> it's an Amish look. He reminds me from Otis from Dead Rising. Yeah. <laughs> really obscure reference, I, I know. I live in Amish country, so I represent, I say that's more of an Amish beard. <laughs> yeah, you've seen it every day. You've seen that every day. I don't see it every day. It's more in a um, central way, part of Ohio, but... By the way, does anyone yeah. remember Two Stupid Dogs? Does anyone remember Two Stupid Dogs? Yeah, I remember that show. Yes. Why? There's a yak that looks like the one dog with the uh, comb over. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh my gosh, it does, and I love it. Uh, wow. And once again, Fire Gem takes center stage as poor Rarity is just terrified seeing like five yaks storming towards her. So she yeah. drops the boofy, and Fire Gem actually takes them away from her. So he's actually uh, defending her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he lost his wings. Oh, yeah. Well, they can't. He can't use them in the tournament anyway. <laughs> also true. Yeah, but he had wings in the previous panel he was in, but now they're gone. They're on his back. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's, that's a slip up that. Back and finer than ever. This is a slip up that I was mentioning before with the helmet. <laughs> well, you, you know, he's he's just on a wing and a prayer at this point. <laughs> so Coach Klaus has this idea: turn Fire Gem into the sacrificial lamb, which is just adding another species into an already mixed mixed bag. And Rarity tries to talk some sense into Gilda because she can't talk to close Coach Klaus directly. But finally, Gilda gains a little independence and talks back saying that, you know, they, they're going to kill poor Fire Gem. And Coach Klaus gets so mad that he flies. And apparently even the coach can't fly. Makes no sense. It also means an automatic ejection. It's like he's not even playing 
in the game? Why is he getting yelled at? <laughs> or did he write in the rules that he apparently can't fly at all, even if he's not playing? Also, ironically, he wrote the rules, so... What? He did not think very far ahead. So wait, he did. does this mean that if any of the audience flies, they're automatically ejected from the stadium, too? Apparently. So, basically... Now suddenly Gilda is the top coach and she is at least more concerned about her player's health because she coaches everyone, including not Greta, to keep the heat off the two weakest players, i.e. Fire Gem and Rarity, and just says, keep sending the boopy ball my way and we might actually win this game. Next panel, and one hour later, they are so losing this game. All I can say is poor Fire Gem in the uh, next page. Seriously, well, he's, he's got a yak on him. Poor guy. Uh, Getting sat on by a yak, definitely not the way you want to spend a Sunday. No. Oh, he's just behind everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He's the butt of the joke. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, guy, look, marry me. No. <laughs> so after that rump rose, <laughs> they basically go for the Hail Highland play, which is not really a, a lot, but through long throws, big kicks, and two face injuries which is great, the Griffins score a point. Yay! And so they lose, but at least they're not the worst ever. It's not a complete shutdown. Well, it's 53 to yeah. 1. <laughs> that, that is just, uh, that's just murder. Speaking of which, we got the Yaks from the original Yak episode here, too. Oh, oh joy. Prince Hufflepuff, something like that. Yak smash. You don't get to use the Halt signature set phrase. <laughs> Yes, the, the Yaks are upset because it wasn't a perfect win. A total victory. Showing that they're, everyone tries to defend them as a warrior race. Let's face it, they're children. <laughs> no comments. Yeah. They're little kids who want to be totally the best at everything, and they throw a tantrum when they don't get their way. And destroy public property, too. They win. Yeah, they assault, they assault the entire Griffin kingdom. So later comics, when the Griffins and Yaks are about to go to war, <laughs> this is why I blame the Yaks. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. By the way, you guys mentioned 53 to 1, but I don't see where they say 53. Uh, it's that, you remember? Yaks win 53 to 1. It's the, oh, uh, there we go. It's the, yeah, yeah, we got the referee back, whose beard has taken over his lower beak. <laughs> <laughs> it's eating his head. <laughs> Oh my god, that makes so much sense. The hair is sentient now again. <laughs> yeah, it's like manga smullet. <laughs> it's the uh, kids of the hall sketch redux. Oh no. <laughs> they won't need to use the uh, stadium anytime soon since, you know, they're out of the tournament, but more importantly, uh, it's destroyed. <laughs> yeah, true that. But Rarity manages to finally make the uni- uniforms and... Ugh. Yeah. yeah. That's really all I can say. Okay. Ah. Yeah, the the helmet is an interesting choice. The body armor is I do understand, but all you need is a stripe and some yellow paddings, and yeah, you you'll be you'll be fine with the Frieza army. Yeah. Well, we, also, the giants. we also learned yet another uh, Griffin named Gretchen. Gretchen. So we've got Gilda, Gertrude, Greta, and Gretchen. Who's Gretchen? I believe she's the Griffin with the glasses. Oh, all right. Yeah. The, Gri- yeah. the Griffin Gretchen's glasses. Nice alliteration. Yeah. Yes. I actually wonder if they just go with let names to begin with G for female Griffins. <laughs> and they've never, we've never named. Ma- German. We've never named a male Griffin out of the show, so who knows? Yeah. Well, there's Grump, but that yeah, could have just been a nickname. Grandpa Grump. But Fire Gem's the only one breaking the trend. Mm-hmm. Well, what about the uh, coach? Oh, yes, Coach Klaus. Okay, so getting a little diversity in there. (laughs) Yeah, the coach, by the way, they found a way to deal with this stress, which is mowing the lawn. Okay. Well, and this I don't I don't get. Uh, They figured out a way to take advantage of Fire Jim's unique talents, and he is now a mascot blowing bubbles in the coach's face. Yeah, that's a thing (laughs) for trouble. First of all, why are you in the mascot costume out of work? Why? Practice? Because reason. I've been a mascot. I have, I've actually been in a mascot before. And you, unless you're doing like a school event or you're going around town, you don't wear the outfit because those things will kill you if you wear them, even if your face is exposed. Yeah, it's really heavy and hot. Yeah. And 
really, really moist in there. Oh, ew, no. <sighs> oh my. Oh wow. No, no. No, 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 Silver. That's not a good oh my. No. Oh my. Oh my. Oh you guys. Put a little of K in here. That's right. But what are his unique talents? What is Fire Jim's unique skill other than getting pummeled? Which is not a skill, that's a sentence. I think they're going for more on like his bumbling nature because the mascot's supposed to be more for entertainment in these sorts of things. And uh possibly because he's got a high resistance to pain as he's able to keep playing the game after being sat on. What I find more random is that they got a dragon for a mascot when they're known as the Griffin Team. Well, that's just because their games go on forever. They just drag on and on and on. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. And on and on and on. Yeah. We're not oh, the whimsy. And it goes on and on and on and on. Okay, I'm good. And, of course, the true stars of the show, Griffin, Gilda the Griffin and Rarity the Pony, part ways because Gilda did the ditch is rarity to carry her own dang luggage. <laughs> Good on Gilda for that. And we go full circle as Lilac Links returns with one destroyed jersey. And basically, yeah, they conclude that rarity might be a little more smitten with kicking around small animals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, wow. She's got plenty of prize with Angel Bunny. Well, the, oh. Hey, there you go. If, if anyone's got it coming. <laughs> Although I'm kind of a little disturbed by that. One portion of that pony. You know, I couture. feel like that should be some yeah. reference to a fashion designer, but I'm not sure. I mean, that like it almost like a Heidi Kluhr from, you know, uh, America's Got Talent. She's a German um, yeah. fashion model yeah, designer. I know Heidi Klum. Could be. I don't Heidi know. Heidi Klum. That's her. Oh, uh, there you go. Sometimes you just know a pop reference when you see it, even if you don't know well, the reference. I don't know. Oh, if this is the right pop reference, because I'm not sure. Like, what is that? It's it is. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, it is true. a pony who's. It's a pony who's gotten probably some Botox injections and knows the value of lip collagen. <laughs> yeah, probably. I don't know. And with that, the comic ends. But either way, it also the Yaks, who should have been disqualified for destroying a stadium. No, they went on to win the entire tournament. They beat Team Saddle Arabia. So. Yay for the X. Yay? I guess. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> this this madness must end. Yes. Madness. This <laughs> is Sparta! <laughs> if, oh, if this were Sparta, the X wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> so, and that's the Friends Forever number 20, 24. We had a boatload of Griffins. We've had a lot of commentary on the artwork. But mm-hmm. it's time, I think, for final thoughts. Yes, indeed. So let's start with the Griffin, who greeted this with such hostility. Have you come to peace over these last few pages? <laughs> oh, we're in the scream therapy and crying phase. Oh, wow. Does someone need a hug? No, I'm not a huggy person. Too nope. bad. I'm hugging you anyway. Norman, All right. hug him. All right. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> joking aside, joking aside, I will admit that the story, it, it had potential. It really did. I would really love to see more Guild in the comics, because Lord knows we're probably not going to see her this season. Mm-hmm. But, but don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the Griffins, but there were so many hiccups, and like we mentioned before, there wasn't really much of a good concentration of detail. I mean... There was a lot of jarring incontinuity, which the comics do actually have a little bit of good continuity within them for the most part. And, but it came to like the designs of the Griffins themselves, the design of Griffinstone and Big G herself. <laughs> it's it just comes off as they didn't really care, or it just came off as why did the editor let this pass through? I'm trying to remember when this comic came out in relation to uh, Lost Treasure of Griffin's. This comic came out after the Lost Treasure of Griffin's Stone. So that's why we get the whole Gilda being nice whole bit. We get it, but I want to know how close together they were. 
because I one that thing because it does take a little bit of time to get a comic out. I mean, if we're talking like a comic like this, it'd probably be about maybe three months at the least. I mean, as someone who's actually studying comics in college right now, it really all depends on how much effort and how long. It really all depends on the company too. Sometimes comics can take like about six months to come up with a script, penciling, inking, coloring. It really all depends. I mean, if it was like during the same production as when they were working on the episode, then I can understand. But at the same time, I would be under the, under the, you know, under the thought line that the comic book artists would be, you know, at least in touch with the designers of the show as well. From what I do understand about the comics is that the writers get access to the scripts and they get to read about, well, the stories that they are doing and kind of try not to jump or try not to step on each other's foot when writing. So writers get to do their own thing while taking inspiration from the show. And this is 24, right? Let me see. Um, Let's see. This one was on... This comic came out on January 6th of this year. And The Lost Treasure of Griffinstone came out on May 23rd of last year. So there's, They had plenty of time. They had plenty yeah, of time. Yeah, that's hard. To, I had hoped that they this could be explained with, you know, just they were too close together to make revisions. But no, there was a significant time gap between uh, comic and, and cartoon. And it would only taken 30 minutes for them to watch the episode, get the background down, get the characters. That's not the case. But hey, even then, even then, there's the Griffin designs too. I mean, they were lazy. And we've seen Griffins other than Gilda in the show. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing that we've been trying to avoid. Well, I personally trying to avoid that J. get here, the artist who drew this comic, is, well, for lack of a better word, is... Uninvested Lazy. in... <laughs> Daisy is a very harsh word. I will just say uninvested in the comic. If he was lazy, he would just do chicken scratches from the last issue of Sailor Moon. Well, you know he's not really invested because I found out somewhere down the line he's not a fan of the show. So well, I there's... think he just decided to do this for like the job. Here's the thing also, because when you're doing a job, it doesn't mean that you're a fan of the show too. You're just doing a job. People who are passionate, well, they do the job and they're passionate about the project. Or they could just be doing the job because they want a paycheck. It's AOB. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Like, I think he only cared about the paycheck. That's why it's not as good in the art department when it comes to Jay Foskett. Like, sure, it's cute and whatnot. It has its own style, but, yeah, that's my outlook on it, anyway. Well, so we've kind of hijacked Manga's final thoughts. No, oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, it's fine. That's stuff I want to bring up anyway, but, yeah. Sapphire, what are your thoughts? I'm going at the same as Manga, especially when I was going on about how I feel the artist doesn't care. And, like I said before, if the artist in doesn't care, like, about the comic, why should I? I mean, the story itself was, uh, it was all right. I'm not a fan of, like, sporting type of stories. Sports are boring for me, so maybe we could look into, like, some more Gilda-centric stories without, like, um, this. Like, in the future. I mean, I like Gilda as a character. I'd like to explore her a bit more. This just that was wasn't a comic. I'm going to hijack you now, Hasafi. That was something else that bugged me about the comic, how they just basically threw away the development that she had in the Griffinstone episode with the scones. Yeah, that, I remember that one. I mean, oh, yeah. it was just kind of like, what was the point? If you're just going to throw it away and make it like a business that's going to fail, I mean, what was the point of even bringing it up in the episode and then just discard it later when you bring Guild up again? Now, it's not as bad because this isn't the show. So I can just ignore the comic, which I've been doing for the last Actually, few Actually, I just have a good story, like, based on that concept. Maybe make a Friends Forever with Pinkie Pie based on that concept. Mm -hmm. That could work. But the thing is with this one in general is the writer here, I don't even know because the writer here, uh, who was it again now? Jor uh, Georgia Ball? 
it seems that Belle. she's Belle. Sorry, did you Belle? Belle? Actually, um, they Georgia spot her. Belle. Belle. All right. So Georgia Bell here, she's really invested in the comics. She's really enjoying what she's doing. And when she's when she saw the issue came out, she was really rather disappointed. Like she did say that Grandpa Gruff in this comic. I don't think anyone is going to recognize him. So page 16. I mean, she even pointed yeah, I it out. Saw it. I know what you're talking about. Which page? Page 16. Like, Grandpa Gruff. Yeah. Uh, the one basic... that's going like back in my day. Yep. 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 That's, that's not the Grandpa Gruff we know in the show. Yep. That's the thing. That's what I said. Who is the Griffin who's apparently wearing a polo shirt behind him? I wonder. Uh, I got no idea. Hmm. Well, either way. Uh, yeah. Karen Foskett may just be doing this as a job job. Mm-hmm. I will say I do I personally got used to his art style and it is it can be interesting to see the cartoony look he brings to it. But again, I'm also one of those fans who did not get all that upset that he had an egg whisk clip art. Yeah. Or a cutie part. Mm-hmm. I didn't get upset either, but Frankly, as someone who is trying to get into the comic book industry and hopes to become a comic book artist himself, I kind of find it a little unfair that he got away with that in a published comic. This is supposed to be professional work that needs to be done. You're supposed to be able to do this, and you can't even draw a whisk. You have to take a pre-made image and slap it on. That's that's kind of just honest. And I'm a little biased, I will admit that, because... I am trying to get into the comic book industry too, but like I said, it just feels a little dishonest to me. Well, have you seen yeah. some uh, Marvel comic with their female poses, especially the Fantastic Four comics? Oh god, uh-huh. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, but I don't really know how the comic industry goes for artists. But as I understand, they're under a lot of uh, stress and deadlines. It's very possible that sometimes they just take shortcuts because that's the only way they can get all this done. But I'm not yeah. entirely sure. I can understand that, but at the same time, you also they can take into consideration of how many pages there are in a comic, how many panels, the script itself. And the thing is that, like I said, there is production time. You're not basically given like a week to draw a 32-page or an 18-page comic or a 24-page comic. You're given at least two months in advance to know about this. Plenty of time if you are working professionally in an industry. But Manga, here's the thing also that you need to remember. Um, this artist, they're not working on one comic. They're working on multiple comics at the same time. I'm aware of that too. And I have that sort of thing right here too with my own videos and my own thing going on. So I'm getting used to it. But at the same time, this guy's professional. I don't know how many years he's been working, but he should be able to manage his time at, at this right here too. Now I'm not saying that he's bad. I'm not saying that he's a bad artist at, because it's subjective on what you think art is good or not. But this is a product that you're paying for, and you kind of expect some quality, a level of quality. That I do agree on. Can we move on, well, please? <laughs> I know. I am, yes, we we. Look, this I, is an I argument. Apologize. I apologize, but this is just something that that I'm trying to get into, and I really. Hold it close to my heart, you know. Yeah, understandable. Safi, we we derailed your final thoughts. Is, is there anything you you'd call like to me ask? Safi, you yes. do like me. I I like I like to hear you groan, my nizzle. <laughs> the moment has well, been then. killed. But yeah, I'll just keep it concise because I know you um don't have the time silver. So yeah, I don't care about this comic as much as I want to. That's it. No more hijacking. All right, okay. Norman, Norman, can you post your thoughts without hijackification? Well, like I mentioned before, I do enjoy this comic. Like, it's one of those comics where I like the art, I like the story, even though the story is a bit iffy at points, but hey, it's one of those things that I enjoy. Knowing that we could have gotten a really good-looking uh, Greta, disappointment, but still, yeah. But this won't be Jace Fosgate's um, last issue, he's he worked on the 28th issue, so that's cool. Yes, and we'll get to that in time. There will be another debate about this for... Oh, my, the 28th had such events. Yes, indeed. Such events. But uh, in my case, 
as I read this, this is not our Greta and Rarity tale. They are in the same area. Greta and they, Rarity. Uh, Guild and Rarity, apologies. You bring shame to the Griffin line. That's okay, I'm only half in line. <laughs> yeah, but it's the half with the brain in it. <laughs> what brain? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, you sold it out to that one hamster. So, you've got, basically, Gilda dealing with the coach, Rarity trying to encourage Fire Gem, and because Fire Gem is the one who's suffering through all this, he's where a lot of my sympathy goes. I'm less invested in Rarity being the out of place, or Gilda and her struggle, because ultimately, they're not the ones risking anything. It's Fire Gem who's risking health and, uh, and emotional stability. And unfortunately, that's what happens when too much focus happens on the comic exclusive characters. I like introducing a cast of comic exclusives. It's a unique identity. But if it comes at the expense of our main characters, then it starts to become a detriment. I mean, as you say, we paid money for a tale about uh, Gilda and Rarity. That's not really what we got. And, yes, the artwork, the, the discrepancies between the show, some of the artwork choices, it can take you out of the story. So ultimately, I view this comic as a pass. I'm sorry that the that the author was so invested that she felt the need to clarify on Twitter. I'm hoping if she gets to do more stories that she not be paired with Jay Foskett again. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the story had good potential. I mean, it was a little jumbo, but I could still probably enjoy it, but, yeah. Oh, no, just I'm just looking up uh, Georgia Bell. Well, funny enough that you mentioned that. She, she's written anything else? Yes, she's written something, and she's done art with Amy Memberson. For Strawberry Shortcake Issue 1. <laughs> oh, God. Hey. Yeah. I don't want to review that. Yeah, me, me neither. neither. But the preview comic that was in Issue 28 was not bad. Oh, there you I go. feel so bad for the poor girl. She can't catch a break, can she? And what do you mean by that? Nothing. <laughs> well, considering the bad luck she had in the My Little Pony comic, even though she's really invested in it, I feel bad for her. <clears throat> Well, a job is a job. Yeah, but either way, we can close the book on this comic yes. with a general meh at best. Eh, if you like Gilda, this is the comic that you can appreciate Gilda. No, <laughs> what? I think there's, I think there's some dissension in the round. <laughs> Thanks. But I do like Gilda, so yeah. And uh, basically. Uh, sometimes you win some, you lose some, and unfortunately, we as the audience seem to have lost out on this. However, there is a new cause to take up: the National Bo- Boofy Puff Protection League, <laughs> <laughs> calling for the end of this barbaric sport. Everyone, get your T-shirts, start writing on your signs. We will protest at dawn. <laughs> Are we going to be like PETA? Well, we, we won't throw blood on people's uniforms if that's what you're worried about. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just grab a megaphone and yell in their ears. We'll get the yaks to come back. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Yaks fight for small animals. Yaks destroy. You kill the small animals. Yaks not care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. But anyway, um, next week's um, review. I believe we're going back to the show. It will be... No second prances. No second prances. The return of Trixie. And she's calling it Dragon Ball, too. Huh? She's got the two-star Dragon Ball. Oh, how's that? What, you didn't see the poster with her holding that orange orb with the two stars in it? Oh, yeah. I did. That one sailed by me, unfortunately. I was too focused on the three stars. <laughs> Twilight, star, Sun, Starlight, and Trixie. It's getting very hard to list Twilight's rivals. They all sound the same. Yeah, I know. They all have the same main styles. <laughs> well, save for Trixie. But Eddie Koo, we will look forward to talk to you all then about these crazy comeuppance of fan favorites. And also, the grand question, how much is that Manticore getting paid? (laughs) Oh, wow. And what is he getting paid in? Apparently free dinners. (laughs) Oh, wow. So, for the MBS show, I am Silver Quill. And I am Norman Sanzo. I am Sapphire Hudson. And I'm Manga Common. We're saying adios. See ya. Bye. I don't have a catchy phrase right now. <laughs> uh, too bad we didn't get a cute Greta. That would be awesome. 
Greta in the show wasn't all that cute as far as I know. Oh, she was. 